Hello and welcome to my third video about voxel sculpting. In this session I would like to <coughs> talk about the different voxel brushes in detail. What are the differences and uh, what can you use them for? What do they excel at? And what things uh, they are a little uh, worse for? Or uh, what situations require what brush, I think that's the best way to put it. I'd also like to talk a little bit about the difference between voxel and surface brushes, because there seems to be a little bit of confusion about the difference between them, because certain names do match and other names don't. Certain tools are specific to surface brushes and others are specific to voxel brushes, so I'll try to bring some clarity uh, on that subject. If time allows, then I'd also like to sculpt a mouth with lips, so there is uh, something to look forward to after a bit of technical information. So with that said, let's start with the increase brush. The increase brush is much like uh, the inflate brush in ZBrush, and I think it's called the bulge brush in Mudbox. What it does is it looks at the normals and it it blows them out pretty much like a balloon. I think I can demonstrate it best by starting with uh, extrude. I'm going to increase resolution just so it's a bit easier to show what these brushes do. Let's say you have a situation like this. Like this. Carve in a little bit, and you would like to create a bit of an overhang. Uh, what you could do is you could just do it with the extrude brush, but this is actually a place where you could really use the increase brush because if you use it here on the top, of course, size has a big, big influence. On how it reacts and it's quite easy to create a nice a nice overhang here of course you can use it on, on fingers as well fin surfaces, tentacles, spikes it's really nice to use it on uh, very thin surfaces and uh, the end of spikes because the extrude burst can be a little unpredictable in those instances and the increased burst is uh, a very nice burst to try out because um, it's, it's very predictable and it has a very smooth build up so with that said let's move on to fill fill is a really nice brush to show it I need to make a bit of a mess there we go a bit of detail what it does is just as the name implies it fills but it only fills the cavities so it doesn't touch the high surfaces the protruding bits it only fills the deeper parts that's not the only use though. Um, I also use it when I've made a, a sharp line, let's say with the extrude brush and the sharp alpha. Let's say I put this pretty high and I make a cut like that, a really harsh one. You can see that because of the voxel resolution you get a little bit of artifacting here in the stroke. Uh, you can use the smooth at a low low resolution that is one way to get rid of them but you can also use the fill brush and just very gently see this is a great use for the fill brush I use it very often like that same here just very lightly and it will just fill the deepest parts 
and now you have a nice smooth line same here so that's a great use for the fill brush the clay brush this is actually a, a very interesting one in that I would like to see it improved a little bit still but it's a bit of a mix between the between the carve and the extrude brush but it has a built-in uh, smoothing function so I could use it right here right now it's pretty much at, at default not too much strength not too much smoothing and if I brush over this you can see it kind of washes out the detail and it blends the strokes together it works best at medium to high resolutions just like the clay brush in other programs but let me show you what happens when you change the settings because uh, this is a unique brush in that if you hold shift this setting actually has influence on the clay brush even when you are not smoothing so if I put this all the way down then you can see it doesn't smooth as much and the strokes do not blend well together I would boost the normal strength even more than you would see that it's starting to act almost like a normal brush so keep that in mind uh, you can also boost the smoothing all the way up and then put strength all the way down and then it acts like a normal smooth brush so there are quite a few possibilities personally I would like uh, the clay brush to work without smoothing because there are times that I don't want it to smooth what's below I just want it to average the stroke that's put on top but maybe that is something that will come in a future revision or I don't know for now I'm going to restore it to its default Uh, what's also important is that um, the smooth setting is shared by all the brushes so if I take the extrude for example you can see that it's a bit low and if I would go to increase you can see it's the same but if I go to clay it's different if I would put it right here in clay and I would go to increase it's still the same if I would go to extrude it's still the same so smoothing is global for all brushes the smoothing strength except for clay because clay uses it for its own purpose and that's important to remember carve is actually a bit of a special brush and I'm going to show you why uh, let me create an example by using the extrude brush there we go there we go uh, in the beginning only the carved brush existed and there was no uh, no extrude brush and the way carve works is that it actually drags a volume over the surface you could say that it scoops away so I'm going to to subtract there we go um, I think it's best to show this example by locking the depth and the width so you can really properly see what it does Uh, for comparison, I'll put the extrude stroke below. Also, look it. Of course, extrude. There we go. Oh, you can see the difference between them right away. Because the carved brush uh, drags a volume around or through the clay. Uh, it differs 
on whether you sculpt on a concave or a convex surface. When you sculpt on a concave surface, from the top of my head, uh, it will actually come a little bit forward. So the stroke uh, depth and width will decrease. Well, if you sculpt over a convex surface, it will actually dig in a little deeper. Now, you may uh, ask whether it's useful if it has uh, that behavior, and the answer is that it depends on your system, because it's relatively fast. If you have a CUDA-enabled system, 64-bit, the difference between the carved brush and the extrude brush probably is so little in speed that you're better off always using the extrude brush. But if your system is struggling a little bit, the carved brush is substantially faster uh, if you do not have CUDA. So keep that in mind, just experiment and remember that uh, this effect gets worse uh, with high contrast sculpting forms. So if you use the carved brush on this area, it works just fine. You you will have very very little problems with it, except on edges, as you can see, it bugs out on there as well. But the moment you get into finer areas with lots of high contrast sculpting, using the extrude brush, it's just a better idea because it always works, it works fine on edges. So, in general, it's best to use the extrude brush. Okay, with that said, let's see what the next brush is. The airbrush. The airbrush is actually a really nice brush. Um, it does pretty much what it says. When you press and hold it, it grows. Um, it's quite nice, you can use it to build up volume. Especially if you turn on fall off, it becomes a very, very smooth brush. It's also great for projecting detail. If you choose uh, an alpha, let's see, maybe this one, and you put the strength really low, if you put it on, on 5 now, you can't see it because uh, the line in the middle, it, it shows a preview of the alpha, but if you have a, a very weird alpha, you can get a very flat line, well, you have a decent strength, so this is something to keep in mind. So you can see the strength is pretty high, but if I switch to this alpha, you can hardly see anything, and the strength is, is, is the same. So keep that in mind. You can always see the depth value at the top of your screen. So I'm going to put it really low. And if I use it now, you can see that you can grow it. And this can be very useful if you want to put fine details on your scope. Okay, let's switch to a normal alpha. Then we have the build brush. The build brush is also very interesting because um, it allows you to build uh, indefinitely. What I mean with that is if you use, let's say, the extrude brush, there's a maximum that you can get to. You know, when you're here, that's it. You have to let go of the stroke and start again. And this is actually a similar behavior to uh, ZBrush, the standard brush, and Mudbox, the standard clay brush. I don't know how they call their brush. I think it's called the Sculpt brush. But sometimes you just want to continue, and that is when you use the build brush, because that's a bit harsh. 